It's good to see you. Praise the Lord, everybody. That's it. Everybody. Praise God. Amen. Uh, and for you at home, praise God. We thank God. Amen. For another opportunity to stand before the people of the Lord. Uh, we don't count it robbery to stand here, but amen. We're appointed by God. Amen. To stand before you and declare the word of the Lord. Amen. Which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Amen. And we glory not in ourselves, but we glory in the only begotten Son. Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. The King. Amen. I am a believer. Amen. I am a believer in Jesus Christ. Amen. I messed up in some areas, but I am a believer in Jesus Christ. Amen. I have some hang-ups. I have some things, some difficulties that fall in my life every now and again, but I am a believer in Jesus Christ. Amen. He's my healer. He's my strong tower. Amen. When I need safety, I can run into him. Amen. There is nothing my God cannot do. Amen. There is nothing my God cannot do. Amen. If he done it for me, I know that he can do it for you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. This, this ain't a show. This ain't fake. Amen. I'm real with this. Amen. I love the Lord. Amen. I love the Lord with all my heart, mind, soul, and my strength. Amen. In fact, I give him my strength. I give him my praise. I give him my worship. Amen. Why? Because I got a why, y'all. I got a why. Amen. Because he's worthy. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. He's worthy of my praise. He's worthy. That's my why. He's worthy today. All that I give him. He's worthy of every hand clap. He's worthy of every hallelujah. He's worthy of every thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Worship and adore you. Just want to tell you and only you that I love you more than anything. I love. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than and adore you just want to tell you that I love you more than my mama than my daddy than money than my wife I love you dearly but I I I love you Jesus 
I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. I worship and adore you, just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Come on, you can sing it. Come on, tell them. Give them a love song. Tell them. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Come on, whisper it to him. Whisper it to him. Whisper in his ear and say it. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Come on, one more time. Tell him, whisper sweet nothings in his ear. Come on, tell him. I just want to say love you more than anything. God, we love you. Now we pray that you would word our mouth. Let the words of our mouth, the very testimony of our hearts, be acceptable unto you, our King, our Lord, our Savior and Ruler. God, we pray that the dominion of heaven, that heaven's kingdom invade the space in which we sit and impart unto us life's words, your words that change, that transform, that encourage, that equips us for our tomorrows and our today. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Again, to he that sits on the throne, that rules reigns supreme. Amen. Dominion belongs to him and life, amen, and death is in his hands. Amen. We honor God today for his rich blessings, amen, that he continues to bestow on his people day by day. Amen. Amen. He won't leave you. He won't forsake you. Praise the Lord. The 37th chapter of Ezekiel, which many of you know Scripture, as it reads from the first verse, says this, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. He caused me to pass by them round about, Behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, 
and ye shall live. Glory to God. And ye shall live. Amen. If you can just encourage one another here in this house and even in your house. Amen. Touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor. Amen. These are dry bones that are rattling. Uh, I, I, I hear the rattling of dry bones. Hear the rattling of dry bones. I'm, I'm seeing the transformation from rigor mortis to resurrection. I'm hearing the dry bones. The, the rattling. Rattling in this house. The rattling in your house. Can you hear the dry bones? Clicking and coming together. Dry bones. Dry bones. Hear ye. The word of the Lord. Hey. Oh, glory to God. Mm. It's as I hear it in my head now as a child growing up. A nursery rhyme, Sister Keisha, that went something like this. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men, every therapist that he had, every, every physician they tried to go to, all the king's horses and all the king's men, they couldn't put Humpty back together again. But thank God for the king of glory. He is the Lord. Scripture says he's strong and mighty. He's mighty in battle. Do we have a reason to lift up our head this morning? So lift up your head. Oh, ye gates. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory. He. Whew. Is anybody there standing at the door? And the king of glory. He shall come in. Who is this king of glory? He is the Lord strong and mighty. He is the Lord mighty in battle. Every dead thing come to attention. And the king of glory shall come in. He shall come in. He's able to make dead things alive again. <sighs> he able to, he's able to bring dry things and renourish them and, and bring them back alive again. Ah, oh, it was the 37th chapter of the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel is going on another day trip. He's going on another day trip. This is not strange to Ezekiel. Because you'll find in the third chapter of Ezekiel that the Bible said that the Lord grabbed him and took him up another time. And when he took him up that time, the Lord began to speak to Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord had lifted him up and set him somewhere. It was to witness the awful abominations of the children of Israel. The temple of Jerusalem and all the things that were happening in the temple. And the last time Ezekiel had gone up, the last time he had gone up into the valley, he had been confronted with a vision vision of glory of God. The, the glory of God was upon him and he experienced God in such a way that the Bible says that after he experienced God, he was unable to speak. In fact, we understand he was under, un, unable to speak for about five years. And now God is taking him again. And transporting him by the Spirit of God back to the same valley that he had experienced before. Whew, has there anybody in here, amen, God has took you over into a place again? 
some, somehow you thought that that awful experience that you had the first time would have been it, but God took you back into the valley again. And the grips of God took you and transported you back into a dreaded place. Here is the scene. Here is the scene, people of God. The scene is this. As you will see on television, it looks like this. The aftermath, the horror was confronted as Ezekiel experienced this vision of God. Unearthed. Massive graves, bodies, skulls, skeletons, piles all over the valley. And in fact, if you can envision that, if you can see that, matter of fact, you've probably seen it on television. Amen. Valleys of dead bodies. And none of these, of course, is quite what Ezekiel saw. But the impact of the whole vast plain covered the unburied human remains. And it must have been appalling that this priest of God, even in his going into this valley, he wasn't, he wasn't supposed to touch any human corpses. Yet here the hand of God actually takes a walk with him. The Bible says he's going to and fro and he's examining what God is showing him. Every detail, amen, he is watching. He, the grisly scene that he's encountering, amen, brings us to two things about these bones. First thing, we got to understand that the bones were many. And later we find out in the Bible, in, 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 in the 10th chapter, we find out that the bones were so many that it created a vast army. It wasn't just any old army, but it was the army of the Lord. So, so in this catastrophic battle in which thousands of people have died, we find Ezekiel stepping over the remains of dry bones. Secondly, that we, we find that not only there were bones, but they were very dry. That is, these bones were not recently slain corpses. But the dry bones of the people had been long dead. The scavengers, the animals, the birds had done their job. The sun had beat upon the bones of the dry. Hallelujah. They bleached them dry. Not only is there no trace of life, but there is no trace of a recognizable individual. There's no trace, there's no evidence of what their face looked like. Just dry bones. Just dry bones. Just dry bones. In an un uncovered grave. Oh. And there are some of us that are here today that are just like you and I. Amen. There are some of us that are in this building right now that even though, hallelujah, we love God, amen, we are dry in some area. We are very dry in some areas. There are some areas in our lives where we can attest to that we struggle with. Some areas in our life that we need to recover, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, there's some places in our life where we were once recognizable by the saints of God and by God himself. But now the thing that's working in our life has tried to make us unrecognizable before the Holy One. It's trying to take your identity, that which God has given you, your birthright from you. It's trying to snatch away life from you. Trying to leave you without a trace, a trace of God's finger 
on your life. It's trying to leave you without a trace of you being solicited and enlisted armies of God. It's trying to leave you without a trace of God's sovereignty and rule working effectively in your life. The devil is a liar and God's name will be exalted in this season. The birds came. They ate of their flesh until there was no more. And the thing that we have to understand that this was a great horror and it was even greater to Ezekiel because we find out that proper burial was of great importance to those in Eastern culture. Not just for the sake of the bereaved, but for the sake of the deceased also. To be deprived of a burial was the final insult and ultimate degradation. It's the enemy of your soul. Amen. That desires to make a mockery of who you are in God. And he wants you to keep you trapped. Trapped by what? Trapped by addictions. Trapped by habits. Trapped by hangups. Trapped by dependency. By appetites that are not pleasing to God. He wants to keep you trapped. Pound by obsessions and pound by influences that God never intended you to live by. He's trying to do it in such a way that he leaves you in an open grave. Uh, that your shame can be revealed uh, before everyone. He's trying to leave you in an open grave where the men and the and, and the and the, and, the, and the naysayers may hear, amen, that your God didn't deliver you. Uh, that they might mock the living God. The enemy put you in an open valley. An open valley where you couldn't do nothing else but say, here I am. Just as I am. Without one plea. Here I am, God. I love you, but I got mess in my life. I love you, but I got things in my life that not pleasing to you. Amen. But I need you to do something different. I need you to do something different in me. Because you've called me by my name. Amen. You've called me. You've called me not to suffer, but to be delivered. You've called me to live in my destiny. Amen. But not live in my past. Amen. God, you've called me out of the curse and not in the curse. Amen. God, you've called me. You got to understand, amen, how did these dry bones get there? As they were investigating, how did these dry bones get where they are? Oh, and if many of you understand war like I understand war, Amen. There are some casualties during war when wartime is going on. It wasn't the wound that killed you. It was the abandonment that killed you. You stayed there too long. And if someone would have heard your cry, amen, God would have answered you. Hallelujah. God would have used them to be an answer to, to your problem. But you stayed there too long. And you bled out to death. You stayed there too long. And it became a part of your life. It, you, you stayed there too long. And it became your end testimony. How did the dry bones get there? In, in the course of battle, somebody might come behind you and strike you. It was an unexpected blow that left you on the field. Amen. And as it left you on the field, you experienced the pain. You experienced suffering. And you wasn't dead yet. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, thanks be unto God. When there is no hope, when rigor mortis has set in place, God is still a God that can resurrect even your dry bones. Even the bones that have sat there for a season, even the bones that's been picked at, that's been ridiculed, 
even the bones that's been left there for dead. Not only dead, but dry dead. Dry dead. The Lord of hosts, the Lord of resurrection, is here to raise you up. Please. Touch somebody, touch somebody, say, I will live, I will live, I will live. This judgment won't keep me. It won't keep me where I am. Amen. But I serve a God. Amen. Who sometimes ask questions that faith cannot answer. Woo! Thanks be unto God. Amen. He didn't ask the question. Amen. For your faith to be activated. Amen. He just asked the question to see if you can trust him. <laughs> Bible says in the third verse, the Bible says it right here, the Bible says he asked me, son of man, can these bones live? <laughs> Woo! I get excited about the question and the answer. <laughs> because when God asks a question, he already has the solution. <laughs> when God asks a question, he, all he already came to resolve before he asked it. When God asks a question, amen, that which we believe is impossible, it's possible with him. When God asks a question, there is nothing that my God can do because my God can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that he did ask or think. God asks a question. He asks Ezekiel, can these bones live? Oh, if we was in church like we used to, I would ask you to ask your neighbor a question. Amen. But since you have your mask on, I'm going to tell you to ask him anyway. And those of you that are home, amen, just put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. Amen. Ask your brother and your sister, can your bones live? Can, can you live? Can you live? Will you live? Will you live? Amen. Just look at somebody. Go, go, go. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them right where you are. What, what a question. There you are standing in the middle of the biggest accumulation of deadly bones huh, that you can ever imagine. It's stretching out far as you can see. Hallelujah. And God begins to ask you, what do you think? Whew. I like it when God begins to include us, amen, in his process, in his Man. Amen. Hallelujah. The only wise God, the God with all understanding, the God who knows all things. Amen. He asks you a question and says, Sister Keisha, what do you think? <laughs> Sister Deanna, what do you think about the situation? Uh, uh, and he asks Ezekiel, can these bones live? Uh, what do you think? Could these bones come back to life? The question is absurd. The answer surely is self-evident. But Ezekiel responds with a brilliant answer. He says, uh, back to God. Uh, God, you know. God, you, you know. You, you know about all the problems that's facing me. You, you know about that. Amen. He, 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 he responds to God, and it's like he's playing tennis, and he gives it right back to God. Amen. Let me encourage you. When you are going through things in life, uh, give it right back to God. <laughs> give it right back to him. Amen. Because those are good hands. He knows what to do with your problems. He knows what to do with your addictions. He knows what to do with your anger. He knows what to do with your habits. Man, somebody just yell, give it to God, give it to God, give it to God, give it to God, give it to God. Uh, why, why was this important for Ezekiel? Because the Bible said that God is the God of both death and life. <laughs> He's the God of both death and life. And in his sovereignty, he controls. Amen. He controls and he reigns over both realms. Glory to God. 
He reigns on those who are living. He reigns on those who are dead. He reigns over the very dry bones. He reigns over those who think there's no hope. He reigns over every soul. Why? Because Bible says all souls, it belongs to him. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And he reigns. Let me encourage you today. Uh, death thought they had Jesus. <laughs> the grave thought they had Jesus. <laughs> oh, situation thought it had you. But thanks be unto God that there is power. Power in the resurrection. Power. Power in suffering. Power. God has all power in his hands. Why? Because he got the keys. He got the keys. And he's giving you access to the throne of God. And thank God for access. Because whenever you got access, whenever you got keys, you can just go to the door. And you can open the door. You can lock the door. And whenever you got access, you can go boldly before his throne and God will answer you. The psalmist that says this, he says, see now that I myself am he. There is no God beside me. I put to death and I bring to life. I have wounded and I have healed. And no one, and no one can deliver out of my hand. There is no enemy in hell. There's no devil. There's no imp that will keep you from your deliverance, from your miracle, from your breakthrough, from your healing. That there is no one. There is no fear that will grip you as long as you are in the hands of God. As long as you are in the hands of God, God has ability. And we can't deny God's ability. We can't deny, hallelujah, what God can do. We can't deny Amen. Hallelujah. His position in our life. We can't deny him as a deliverer. We can't deny him as a healer. We can't deny, hallelujah, as a God of a breakthrough. We can't deny him of breaking every chain, everything that was the... Bible says he can say, here. He began to tell these dry bones. Although there are bones in your ears, dry bones don't have ears. He tells you to begin to speak to something that doesn't have the ability to hear you. So in other words, he tells you not to speak to what you can see. But he wants you to speak to what you can't see. He wants you to activate your faith. Activate your faith and believe God. And the Bible says that Ezekiel, the Lord, Although he didn't see ears on the bones, he didn't know where they were located. He didn't know how they were going to hear him. But he just heard the word God. When you hear the word of God, it will speak to your dead situation. That which you have, <laughs> that which you have gave up on, God will begin to speak to it again. That which you thought was dormant, I will begin to speak to it again. That which you thought was already over, God will begin to speak to it again. 
And he said, speak and prophesy to the bones. Oh, I, I hear a rattling. I hear a rattling of believers. I hear a rattling of, of dry bones. I hear a rattling of the body of Christ. I hear a rattling coming into the house. I hear a rattling. Come on, somebody. This is the sound. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the sound of the army of God coming together. This is the sound of overcomers. This is the sound of those who are victorious. This is the sound. Come on, come on, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Begin to worship him. Begin to praise him. Until he begins to breathe into your life. Come on, Holy Ghost. Breathe in us. Breathe in us. Breathe in us. Breathe in us. Dry bones begin to come together. This bone connected to this bone. Uh, this muscle connected to this muscle. This skin begin to connect with this skin. And all of a sudden you begin to see an army of God standing. But they were still dead. But I declare to you today that which God has brought together He's getting ready to breathe on The vultures in your life won't come back again. This ain't a second meal for you. This ain't a second time, devil. This time I got the breath of God in me. I got the four winds of God walking through me. I got a flame that's lit in me. Come on, just lift up your hands. Say, Lord, breathe on me. Lord, breathe on me. Lord, come on, come on. Prophesy, 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 prophesy. Hallelujah. Lord, breathe on me. Breathe on my health. Breathe on every habit. Breathe on my relationships. Breathe on my mind. Breathe on my heart. Breathe on my body. God, I give it all to you. I, I hear a song said, this is a sound. Dry bones rattling. Uh, God, is there anything impossible for you? Break chains in my life. Can you break habits in my life? Can you break addictions in my life? God, I believe. God, I believe, I believe that there's nothing impossible for you. The tomb is empty. There's nothing impossible for you. Nothing can stop God. That which God has created in you, you are no longer bound to. You're no longer bound by the addictions, by the hang-ups. You're no longer bound. You're no longer bound with worry. Because he's overcome it. He's overcome it. He's overcome your fear. Oh. The Bible says the, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. 
So why are you carrying it? By his stripes, you're healed. By his stripes, you don't need weed anymore. By his stripes, you don't need p- pornography anymore. By his stripes, you're healed. You're released from bondage. Is there anything in too hard for God? Can he deliver you? Can he set you free? The question, even as he asked Ezekiel, and our response ought to be, God, you know. I'm trying to deal with it, but God, you know. You know what you can do. I don't know how I'm going to get out of it, but God, you know. I don't know how to deal with it, but God, you know. Can these bones live? Uh, Somebody get me. Can these bones live? Can my life be transformed? God, you know. All we have to do is just respond to the word. Just like you responded to the word. First thing he said, God, you know. And he responded to what God said. And he began to say what God said. Your deliverance. Is sometimes buried in what God said. Oh. Your breakthrough is buried in what God has said. Although your chains are an open chain solution, your resolve is in what God has already spoken. And you belong to him. You belong to him. And he's able to break every chain. Mm, I hear that song. He's able to break every, every chain. He's able to restore. He's able to renew. He's able to put back together again. Because there's power. There's power in his name. There's power in the finished work of Christ. He has enough the power to deliver. He has enough power to set you free. He has enough power. He has enough power. Touch your life again. He has enough power to raise up his standard. When the enemy came in like a flood, his standard of holiness, he has enough power. He has enough power to keep you from falling. He has enough power Combat every enemy of your soul. I'm going to invite you right where you are. You can make an altar right where you are, right in this house. You can turn around and right there at your chair, you can make an altar right where you are. You can make an altar right in your house, right in your home. Amen. And give it over to him. Give it over to him. Everything, every care, every worry, you can give it over to him. Don't take another moment to think about it. Come to Jesus. Just as you are, he's able to put you back together again. 
He's able to raise up a sound in your life. He's able to connect you back into the fold. Come on, lift up your heart, stars heaven. And I'm speaking to everyone, every one of us, every one of us who is dealing with life and trying to deal with it on our own. Amen. I believe that God has sent us today to speak to the dry areas of your life and to speak to them and to prophesy to them and tell them you will live and not die. You will die. You won't die in this. You won't die living the same old mundane life, doing the same thing over and over again. And you won't deny deny the power of God that's able to free you. Sister Kim, if you can just sing that song softly for this house and for that house that's right there in that living room. Can you just begin to sing this song? Sing this song. There's power in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There is power. Name of in the name of Jesus. To break it, to break it. To break every chain. Yes, yes. Break every chain. Break every chain. Yes. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Come on, say it again. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Glory to you. don't have to worry about it. There is power Glory to your name, Jesus. in the name of Jesus. He's heal you. He's able to deliver you. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, yes. break every chain. Come on, come on. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Come on, come on, chain. come on, dry bone. There's an army. There's an army. Come on, alley of the dry bone. There's an army rising up. There's a army rising up. There's an army rising up. God is breathing into your situation, breathing into there your is an army. Rising up. And what is God doing? He's breaking every Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Glory, hallelujah. To break every chain. Break every chain. Come on, break everybody, every everybody say it. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Oh, there's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. To break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. I hear the chains falling. Yeah. Yeah. I hear the chains falling. Come on, prophesy to those chains. Oh, I hear the chains 
Come on, speak to the ear. Speak to the ear. I hear the chain. Speak to the dry bones. I hear the chain. Oh, I hear, I hear the chain. In the name of Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. I hear the chains. I hear the chains. Hear the chains. I hear the chains fall. I hear the chains fall. I hear the chains fall. God, we thank you now. bring all of our cares to you. We bring our lives and back to you because you care for us. You care for us in our struggle. You care for us in our pain. You care for us in our hurts. God, we believe that this day this moment, this hour, you are restoring, you are renewing, you are bringing our lives back together, you are mending broken places, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh God, our hope, our hope is being made alive today in you, God, we cleave to your word, the rhema word, the living word, hallelujah, the logos, the word of God, we, we cleave to it this moment, this this hour, this second. Your word is faithful to wash us, to sanctify us, to cleanse us. God, we thank you. We thank you for the army of soldiers, the army of believers that are rising up out of valleys everywhere, all around the world. You're calling us out. You're launching us. You're deploying us to testify of all that you can do. God, as we march to your orders, as you direct us and as you lead us in our lives, and as you breathe on us the pneuma, the breath of God, as you make us alive today, we won't return to this valley anymore. This valley wasn't meant for us. We're walking out of it. Hallelujah. We're moving out of it. We're deploying out of it. Hallelujah. We're getting our instructions out from it. God, we thank you right now. Thank you right now for your delivering hand. Thank you right now for putting our lives back together again. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus, for restoring us, for restoring your people. We thank you, Lord, for being so very good to us. And now we give you glory, and we give you honor, and we give you praise. Now, God, as you continue to sanctify us, you continue to make us and to mold us into the image of your Son. God, we thank you for better, better days, better outcomes, better results. Through the power of your word and your Son, Jesus Christ, to him be all wisdom, be all glory, be all honor, be all power both now and forever. Now as we leave this place, oh God, but never from your presence, Lord, let the sanctifying of your spirit that raised Jesus from the dead also raise us up, hallelujah, so that we might be caught up to meet you in the air. These things we pray and ask in the precious name of Jesus. And all of God's people said, thank God. Amen. 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 Come on, let's give God a hand of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.